every time you bet at a casino, whether you win or lose, the casino is dumping a chemical jackpot on your brain, sending it all the right signals to fool it into thinking you're on fire. All those lights and sounds and smiling celebrities, the almost matches and the fake wins, all of these stimuli are activating the reward centers in your head and making your brain believe you're engaged in an activity that is super beneficial for your life right now. Your system is telling you, this feels amazing. We need to do this some more. And so to make sure that happens, it pumps out this super powerful hormone called dopamine. And that makes you wake up, pay close attention to this super pleasurable activity, record in your brain exactly how incredible it feels so that you're gonna want to do it again in the future. Dopamine is a brilliant hormone that typically motivates us to do things that make us happy and that are good for us. For instance, it's released when we exercise or when we hug somebody we love, and that encourages us to do those beneficial activities again. With gambling though, dopamine has the opposite effect. It hoodwinks us into wanting to do something that's harmful for us, and it motivates us to gamble all our money away. But the bigger issue though is that this motivation to gamble doesn't just disappear when we exit the casino. See, if you're like I am, then watching all these high-speed screens spin and flash for even the small amount of time that they played during this video may have made your senses feel completely overloaded and like you were gonna need to look away or else your brain might melt into mush. Now, can you imagine what would happen to the circuitry in your head if you watch this crap for hours and hours on end for weeks at a time? How much of this could you take until your system started numbing itself just to survive? I mean, I know I couldn't tolerate this for long. My brain would need to desensitize, and this is exactly what happens with addictive drugs. Every highly addictive drug, whether you swallow it, snort it, smoke it, or push a button on a slot machine, every addictive drug makes your brain release way too much dopamine. They all trigger your nerve cells to unleash a tsunami of dopamine, and the first time you take these drugs, you gonna feel fantastic. You can get high as hell. Just like the first time you see those explosive animations on the slot machine screen, you are dancing and having a good old time. The problem comes though when you expose yourself to an addictive drug over and over and you rush those massive amounts of dopamine into your body on the regular, eventually it's gonna start frying the hardware in your head. At some point, your brain is gonna say, Look, we can't handle this much stimulation all the time, so we gotta dial back our sensitivity or we're gonna brick our motherboard. What then happens is that your brain decides to lower the amount of dopamine that it makes so that the next time you take this drug, you're not gonna feel as good. You're not gonna get the same high. Now you're gonna have to take a bigger dose to get the high you got last time. You're gonna need to place a higher wager and raise the stakes to reach the same level of satisfaction you felt before. And all those beneficial activities from real life and the happy little day-to-day -day moments that should make you feel good, those aren't even gonna register with your tone deaf nerve cells. That stunning sunrise that you see as you're walking out to your car in the casino parking lot, it ain't gonna cause a blip in your brain. When you finally get home to your family who's been worried sick, wondering where you were all night, they don't stand a chance at making you as happy as that slot machine because their faces aren't covered in blinking lights and dancing dollar signs. Now, the only experience that's sensational enough to reward your dopamine-deprived brain is gonna be gambling. And in the meantime, when you're not doing it, you're gonna feel super sad and hollow, knocked out by the anesthetic effects of withdrawal, fiending for your fix of fake wins, even when you're in the middle of moments that should be the most memorable ones in your life. For example, this recovering gambler said that on the day she was giving birth to her daughter in the hospital, she was in the bed as labor was progressing and she was actually on her phone trying to withdraw money so that she could gamble on it. My daughter was beautiful. That day that's what I was thinking about. My every thought and every being, if I wasn't at the casino, I was figuring out how I was going to get there. Where was I going to get the money? I mean, every single week at the football, like the first thing I'd want to do when I got there is bookies, bookies, bookie. They have shakes. They're physically having these responses. I'm literally bouncing, because there's someone in front of me at the teller, and I'm just thinking, come on, come on, you know, you just, I just want to literally get that money and smash it. And you tell yourself, it's got to be on, they got to be on something, yeah. and it turns out that they're withdrawing from the gambling. 
And y'all, this ain't an exaggeration. This is proven science. Medical research shows that gambling rewires the nerves in the brain the same way that addictive drugs do. Doctors have monitored the brains of gambling addicts while they're playing casino-style games, and they found the same patterns of activities in the brains of both cocaine addicts and gambling addicts. You've been watching an excerpt from my video on the evil ways that casinos manipulate your mind and profit from addiction. If you want to watch the full documentary over on my main channel, then you can click the link in the description or in the end screen coming up. All right, thanks for watching. Bye, y'all.